السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله فاطر السماوات والأرض وجاعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات فالحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله لا نبي بعده اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحابته وكل من تبع هداه واستمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد فيا عباد الله صيكم وإياي بتقوى الله عز وجل فقد فاز من اتقى فقال عز وجل في كتابه الجليل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم قال يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا معاشر المسلمين My dear respective brothers and sisters We begin as always by saying Alhamdulillah praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings. Today is truly a blessed date for all of us. Allah is enabling us to be here, humbling ourselves for a moment, showing our gratitude and commitment to be better servants of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this gathering and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. In two days, we are going to say goodbye to 1,445 of Al-Hijrah. And entering into the new year, 1446 Al-Hijrah. And when we, the people, are welcoming New Year, the Gregorian, I mean it, or Masihi calendar, or Miladi calendar, those people are so excited. They have lights, they have celebrations. And this is our new year. Do we have the same excitement? Do we have the same pride or even more? Brothers and sisters, new year for us started with Al-Hijrah. And a lot of wisdom to talk about. The time is very limited. But my point for us, new year of Al-Hijrah is not only to welcome a new year, but there is something bigger behind that. Number one, for those of you who attended our Eid al-Adha Salah a few days back, you remember my khutbah that I was talking about Ibrahim's and self-transformation. Now what does it mean here? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa moved from Mecca to Medina. It's called Hijrah known to all of us. But then after Fatuh Makkah, he declared, Rasulullah declared, 
that there is no hijra anymore Ba'da Fath Makkah after the Fath of Makkah there is no hijra walakin niyatun wa jihadun but niyat and jihad continues in other words the word hijra is translated into these two words niyat and jihadun now i would like to connect this into what the people used to say when they are celebrating new year they have they call new year resolution and normally they asking each other what is your resolution what is your new year resolution you know, I wanted to take this into Islamic understanding. For us, New Year resolution is having a commitment, a niyat, and jihad at the same time. That is the resolution. Now, what does it mean? Niyatun wa jihadu. Niyat means a strong willingness, a strong commitment, followed by struggle, striving. For what? To change. And that is what transformation. Foundational transformation. Individually, that we are becoming better. Our salat is becoming better. Our fasting is becoming better. Inshallah, zakat is becoming better. Our connection to one another, our relationship to one another, becoming better. No lies, no fitna, no riba. Becoming more humble, becoming more friendly. That is a resolution. That is niyatun wa jihadun for us. It's not easy to smile to those we don't like sometimes. But they are our brothers. They are our sisters. There is jihad sometimes we need in our life, brothers and sisters. This is what this hijrah is all about. Moving from one place to another, there is no anymore, according to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the fatah after Fatah Makkah. I cannot say, you know, man, it's difficult to leave my Islam in America. I wanted to go to Saudi Arabia. There is no guarantee, brothers, that living in Saudi Arabia are going to be better Muslims than living in America. I can see my Muslim brothers and sisters in America, they are more committed to Islam than those who are living in Saudi Arabia. It is not about place here. It is about niyatun wa jihadun, as Rasulullah sallallahu mentioned. The question here, brothers, that we come to another question, why then the new year in Islam or calendar Islam begins with the hijrat of Rasulullah sallallahu Why with not his milad, maulidun nabawi? Or why... The new calendar is, be, began with uh, the birtha of Rasul when he was receiving the wahi for the first time. Why would hijrah? A lot of meaning. Number one, we have to understand, we have to know that the one who decided the calendar was Umar radiallahu anhu. During the Khilafah of Umar. And Umar radiallahu anhu was one of the Sahaba which is very deeply, highly intelligent, not only intellectually, Yes, he was very smart. But more importantly, spiritually, he was a very intelligent man. To such an extent that when Umar walked on the street, Shaitan is running away because of his powerful ruh, powerful spirituality. Umar radiallahu anhu. He was the one who decided the Islamic calendar. And he decided that the Islamic calendar must begin with the hijrah of Rasulullah sallam. And the question is why? The answer is, if you see the, the, the history of Islam, there are at least five levels, stages of Islamic development. Number one is the Maulid of Rasulullah Sallallahu He was born not only as a person, but remember, more importantly, he is the, the best human being. The final of the Messenger and the Prophet, and he had come with the most complete deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that is the beginning of the journey. And that's why some Muslims take it very seriously. With all the debate and discussion about the Muslim, either it is allowed or not allowed to do some celebration, is up to you to discuss. But my point, the birth, the birth of Rasulullah is so important in the history of Islam. The second one is the bi'tha of Rasulullah, the appointment of Rasulullah to become a prophet by the revelation of Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, when he was 40 years old. Second stage. And the third one is when this ummah rise individually. Individually. They are becoming stronger in their iman. By what? By challenges. Rasulullah at the time was deeply challenged. His family was boycotted. Bani Hashim was boycotted. To an extent that his beloved wife and his beloved uncle died. And that year was called Amul Huzn, the year of sadness. 
for he said, Rasulullah Sallam. But it was the beginning of rising, become stronger individually, spiritually, by what? Allah took him up to the heaven. Isra' mi'araj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a salah. Why? A salah to mi'arajul mu'min. When we do prayer, we are strengthening our heart, our spirituality. It's not only putting our forehead on the ground without feeling anything. We are becoming strong individually when we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why when Rasulullah sallam faced any tremendous challenge, Asra Ali Salah, he was hastened to pray. Because that is a solution. This is the third stage of Islam. And afterward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then commanded him to move to Medina. I'm not going to talk about why Medina, why not Yemen, why not other places. It's another topic here. But it's very important to understand. I hope that you can learn something. Why Medina is chosen. But the point after individual development, but with the Isra Mi'araj, now comes social, collective, communal development. By what? By hijrah of Rasulullah Sallam from Makkah to Medina. And that's why Medina was the first Islamic state. You can say Islamic nation, Islamic community, where the Ummah was growing. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, brothers and sisters, so hijrah is not because of the difficulties. Not because of the challenges that Rasulullah faced in Makkah, and that's the reason why he... No, Allah had prepared Medina, that this is the place for you to build the Ummah, the community of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the last stage certainly is Fatuh Makkah. Some years later, eight years later. So that's why, brothers and sisters, Hijrah is paramount. It's so important in the history of Islam. Now, coming back to the Hijrah itself, what then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did? From the hijrah to build the community, an ummah, what Rasulullah did until the victory comes later on, until Fatuh Makkah, what Rasulullah did? There are at least seven things that we have to remember. Number one, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam established a commitment, a full commitment to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala in every aspect of his life. What is the indication? Indicated by the establishment of the first masjid, Masjid Kuba. So Masjid, brothers and sisters here, Jamaica Muslim Center, is not a building. It's not a building. I've said it many times. It is about a commitment for all of us who are living in Jamaica to worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have your offices around. You have your businesses around. But I hope that your, your offices, your businesses, and all things that you do around this center are connected to this masjid. And once again, masjid is not only a building, a commitment to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So while you are in the office, you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While you are in the market, you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While you are in the stores, you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the meaning of masjid, my brothers and sisters. And Jamaica, Muslim science has proven that. Many of you, mostly Bangladeshi brothers and sisters, come into this place because of this masjid. And I hope that you are coming here, not only the opportunity, dunya opportunity, but this is an opportunity to pursue dunya by connection. Connection with what? Connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the commitment that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam built in Medina the first time. That's why he established the masjid first, this first one. The second one, Akha bain al muhajirina wal ansar. He made the brothers, Uhuwa, between the muhajirina and ansar. Now, brothers and sisters, very sad to say that sometimes we are the opposite. When we are trying to establish our community, sometimes the, the first challenge is the challenge of Uhuwa, the challenge of brotherhood. You know, when we are weak, there is no masjid. Our masjid is small, mashallah, everybody is coming to the masjid. Everybody is smiling. When the masjid is developed big, become bigger, now we are becoming fighting about who is going to be president, who is going to be chairman, who is going to be committee. No, brothers and sisters, Uhuwa is paramount important. A community cannot be established without Uhuwa, without unity. And that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu when he moved to Medina, the second thing he did after the commitment to Allah, ibadah to Allah, is Akha bain al muhajirina wal ansar. And this is the biggest challenge that we are facing as an Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam domestically and globally. Why our Gaza brothers and sisters, why our Palestinian brothers and sisters are still suffering? Not because America is so powerful, not because Israel is so powerful, but because this Ummah is not united. If this Ummah is united, America can do nothing. 
If this ummah is united, Israel is nothing. But why our Palestinian brothers are suffering? Because this ummah is disunited. There is no unity. It's the second one Rasulullah did in Medina. And the third one, then he did a consolidation as a nation. By what? By establishing the first ever civic constitution in the history of humanity. Now, we are so proud of American constitution. And if you see the American constitution is very much equal, e equivalent, so almost the same with the constitution of Medina at that time. The protection of minority, the word equal and justice for all here in America, you have it in the constitution of Medina. The, the, la the, la the largest, the longest chapter of the charter of Medina, Ahad Medina, is about protection of the minority at that time. Happened to be a Jewish particularly, Christian particularly, and among the Arab non-Muslims, because the Muslims became, become majority. But the Muslims protect them. That's what the Constitution is all about. And that's why, brothers and sisters, when we come to the issue of nation, this Ummah must take participation. Not only take participation, but we must be taking a leading role in this nation. When we ask you to register to vote, when we ask you to, to vote, sometimes we think it's not important. Brothers, it is a part of that process to take a leading role in this nation, in this country, America. Because this is our nation, as Rasulullah did in Medina. This is number three. Number four, brothers and sisters, and then Rasulullah was commanded to give zakat. The ayah came down, wa aqimus salah wa atu zakat. It was just the second year of the hijrah. So what Rasulullah Sallam understood about zakat, many of us understand about zakat is giving. There is no doubt about that. Five percent of your income after spendings, once in a year, very easy actually. The more you have, the more you give. The less you have, the less you give. This is the justice in Islam. But how Rasulullah understood zakat? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to give zakat, he understood that it's not about giving only. It means that we have to have more income. Because how are you going to give if you don't have income? And that's why what he did? He developed his community economically. What he did? He purchased the market. He purchased the wealth from the Jewish community. And that's why, brothers, when we encourage you, those brothers who have this talent in business, do your business professionally because that's what Islam is all about become someone who is economically stable if possible powerful because you are the people who are going to, to help this ummah that's what happened to Rasulullah this is number four brothers and sisters make it short and then number five Rasulullah sallallahu began this defense system military system because what America used to call domestic and global threat begins. The Makkam people are coming to destroy the community of Rasulullah So he was forced to prepare themselves and the Quran came down, وَأَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَسَّتَعْتُمْ مِنْ O oh, Muhammad, prepare for them, to engage them, to battle them, to fight them with power. And that's what Rasulullah did. That's the Ummah, brothers and sisters. So when you talk about military, it's about Islam. That's what this is. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And fi finally, before the last one, brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam begin what is modern time called international diplomacy. What he did, he sent letters out to the kings, and in that letter he said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, from Muhammad the Messenger of Allah to Kaisar to Kisra to all the kings of the world at the time. We hope that we are going to have a Muslim leader who can send to the presidents of the world and say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the merciful, the compassionate, from the president of the Muslim country, such and such, to you. Is there anybody? We are waiting. That one day we have that president who can send letters out inviting them to Al-Islam as uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu did, my brothers and sisters. This is diplomacy Rasulullah did. And what happened afterwards? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi declared what is called today global affairs, international relations. By what? In, during the Hajjatil Wada. The last, and it's the only Hajj of Rasulullah Sallallahu He delivered a monumental khutbah called Hajj Khutbatul Wada. And in that khutbah to Wada, 
Rasulullah SAW laid down the foundation of human relations globally, human international relations. You are talking about racial equality. And Rasulullah SAW said, Kullukum min Adam, wa Adam min Turab. All of you came from Adam, and Adam was created from the clay. There is no superiority of a, of a white of a black, nor of a black of the white, except the, the virtue of piety. There is no superiority of um, anyone, Arab, of a non-Arab, a non-Arab of the Arab, except taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. Today, maybe in America, we say there is no superiority of a white, of a non-white, because there's an issue in America. Or maybe sometimes they say there is no superiority of immigrants and non-immigrants. Sometimes the white people around us, they, say, they, call, they, they consider themselves non-immigrants. While those who are with skin colors, they say you are immigrants. They forgot that they are coming from Europe. They are also immigrants. But sometimes they feel that they are the real Native Americans. Brothers, we need to remind them what Rasulullah said in, in Hajjatul Hajjat Wada. Brothers and sisters, this is what Hijrah is all about. So my point is, that new year for us, that it is began by Hijrah, it is not only changing of the year. It's a lot of philosophical meaning that we must understand. I just challenge myself and all of you to learn more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Al-Qulu khali hadha astaghfirullah, fa astaghfiruhu la'allaha sa'atu ijab. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين شهد الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله لا نبي بعده صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. At the end, my brothers and sisters, we acknowledge that at the moment our ummah is deeply challenged. We can cry, we can be angry, we can blame others. But nothing is more important to do except hijrah. And what is hijrah? We must change. In Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. The situation of this ummah will never change and Allah will not change it until we ourselves change our situations. That's the ayah in the Holy Quran. And we, the ummah of Muhammad, must change individually and globally. One of the things that this ummah must change globally is about inferiority complex. The translation of inferiority complex in Arabic in the hadith of Rasulullah is wahan. What is wahan? Hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut. Sometimes this ummah is so scared of others, not because of others are so powerful, but because we love this dunya too much. We don't want to lose our interest. And when I deliver khutbah at the United Nations once in a month, and I mention this many times to our diplomat, Muslim diplomat at the United Nations, that you can pursue your national interest. Saudi becomes Saudi powerful, Emirati powerful, Qatar powerful, Bangladesh powerful, every Muslim nation must be powerful. But there is even more important beyond that. And that is about the ummah. Qul inna hadihi ummatukum Ummatan wahida. This ummah is one ummah. But this ummah is not taken seriously by the ummah because we are divided. Why we are divided? Because of this hubbu dunya wa karahiyatul maut. We love this dunya too much and we are fearful of death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. Those who died, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them mercy and accept them to the Jannah. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah yuwafi na'ama yukafi mazidah. اللهم ربنا لك الحمد ولك الشكر كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك الكريم وعظيم سلطانك اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انصر من نصر الدين وجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا ولصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكر وانثانا اللهم من أحيته منا فأحيا الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتوب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم صلى الله تعالى وبارك على نبيه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه جميعين برحمتك يا رحمن قم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استووا استقيموا سووا شفوفكم تراس وسد الخلل حاذو بين المناكب الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وأخرى تحبونها نصر من الله وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا أنصار الله كما قال عيسى بن مريم للحواريين من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله فآمن الطائفة من بني إسرائيل وكفر الطائفة فأيدنا الذين آمنوا على عدوهم فأصبحوا ظاهرين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر بسم الله الحمد 
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله